Alright guys, today we're working on the wife's car. It's got a couple of codes. Uh, first time it's throwing a code since, uh, you know, I put the engine in it. I don't even know, three, four years ago. Uh, it's got over 50,000 miles on it. I think I put that engine in when it had like 21,000. So it's throwing a really weird code. Uh, I already diagnosed it, but it's so strange. I was like, ah, I gotta make a video on this. Plus, I've been so busy at work, I have not made a video in probably a year. So. Uh, let's go. It's kind of a weird one. So it is throwing two codes. Uh, one's a flex ray message code, right? Let me zoom in and there, yeah, there you go. The mobile or manual zoom. Uh, and then it's throwing a code for the, um, uh, the uh, timing actuator. So the Valvetronic actuator phase five is in yeah, open circuit, uh, not current, which is important, but is a stored DTC. So the first thing I did, and this was probably not the right thing to do. Uh, the first thing I did is I jumped over. I'm like, all right, let me see if there's anything, you know, going on with this valve, um, you know, from a wiring perspective. So th this is the valve itself here. This is the, the harness. Whoa, there you go. This is the harness for it. It's very a short harness. It goes from the ECU here, right in the back, right in time, right here. There's, it's tiny. <laughs> so I pulled the harness off. I checked it, did continuity tests on it, did all that stuff. I mean, it looked perfect. All the pins were brand new, nothing. Uh, I did do pin fitment test on each side of it. It, it was fine, uh, yet I still kind of <laughs> jammed them in a little bit just to make sure. And then the only other circuit piece of this, um, there's a power distribution module that lives uh, up in here onto that cover. I think you guys can see that. Whoa. So there's a shit balls. There you go. There's a power distribution module that's kind of pour force into like a plastic bracket in here and the the wiring and the fuse is this plug here and that's the plug for the um the valvetronic piece right so i did the same with that i uh i pulled it out i checked the wires um everything looked great and and there's five fuses in this little module in there and they are not serviceable you have to just replace the whole module so I was thinking maybe there's something wrong with that. So I took the cover off and I beat the snot out of it. I even heated up with a heat gun because I thought maybe it's heat related. I, for the life of me, cannot get this code to come back, right? I mean, I, I'd clear it and I would, I spent like an hour dicking around with cables and all that stuff, trying and trying and trying to get this code to come back and it wouldn't. But I finally figured it out. <laughs> and I'll, I'm gonna show you guys live, right? We're gonna, we're gonna uh, erase it. And as I did that, the car went to sleep. This stupid car goes to sleep after like a couple of minutes. All right, we'll let it hook back up. And we're gonna clear these bad boys. Yes. Okay, we'll reread it, but they won't be there. Okay, so we're good. The car's happy, no code, but I'm gonna show you why it's throwing the code. So what it's doing is uh, this is a BMW uh, uh, faultfinder.com, I think. Um, and basically you can put in whatever code you're getting and it'll tell you what's going on, right? So this is the one for the uh, actuator. And it's pretty basic. It basically says, yeah, you know, it has to be between nine and 16 volts. Um, it's not temperature related or anything like that. It's on terminal 15, fine. And then it'll tell you, you know, the criteria for setting it, right? So this fault is entered if it exists for longer than the debounce time. So it's basically saying if it's one one hundredth of a second, if it falls under this voltage, it's gonna flag it, right? So, and they basically tell you, check the wiring, check the DME, replace the, the motor. <laughs> Thanks a lot, BMW. That is, not, that is not the solution in this case. And I'm gonna show you what's going on. <laughs> so we'll put our scan tool back up here. Whoa, whoa. I might have practiced making these videos. So we'll read it again just so you can see there's no code there, right? Okay. So the problem with this one is right here. So this battery is is going bad and there's no signs of it going bad other than the data. Like it starts the car just fine, right? But there's something wrong with it. I'll show you why. So right now we're at 11.8 volts. And I've had this thing sitting on for a while. Talking crap to the YouTube camera, right? So we're going to set this to minimum value. So if that goes below 9 volts, that's our problem, right? So let me set you guys up here. And I'm going to go start this car. And 
our minimum, that's our minimum reading, it's 7.22, right? Okay, so we technically should have our code back. So let's read our codes. There you go, Valvetronic Actuator. It'll throw the flex message one for the exact same reason. Let me turn this off. So the flex relay one has the same code setting criteria. If it drops uh, below nine volts, it'll, it'll throw that code. Uh, I think it's every second or third start is, is when you'll get the other one. So it comes right back, I, I believe, because it's uh, going under nine volts, right? So let's clear this again. I might have to cycle the ignition. Nope, there we go, we're good. We'll reread it. Okay, we're good. Let's stick a jumper pack on it. So give me one sec, I'm gonna hook this jumper pack to the battery, we're gonna redo our test. Whoa, focus, okay. So I've hooked up the jumper pack, I've kind of shoehorned the connections in there, and we've got our meter on as well, and we're sitting at our minimum value, which is, whoa, zero, because I had it disconnected. So with the jumper pack on, pretty sure it's charged, what do we got? Yeah, it's at like 12, a little over 12 volts. So we're reading it, yeah, almost 12 volts here. So we're gonna redo our test. We've cleared our code. We're gonna start the car again. I'm gonna set you guys here again. And we're gonna put this on uh, to record minimum value. I'm gonna start it again. So you can see there, we didn't go below nine volts, right? So technically we shouldn't have a code. And I think that battery pack needs charged anyway. Uh, so we're gonna read our codes. No codes. No check engine light. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's our deal. Yeah, no, no trouble codes, right? And we can do it again just to show you again. We'll turn it off, on, and we'll disconnect that jumper pack, and we'll start it again. And you'll see, it'll come right back. Oh, give me a momento. Let's take that one off. We'll just pull that positive one off, and no big deal. Let me set you guys up where this hopefully isn't too glary. And we'll go minimum. All right, and we're gonna start it one more time. We got 8.3, so we should have our code. Uh, every time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's what's going on with it. Um, really important to read code setting criteria. Uh, I almost, I almost ordered a valve and spent the, whatever, I don't know, six, BMW says six hours. It's probably two and a half. <laughs> I, I almost did it, and then I thought, you know, I better just read how this, by this code setting. And, and I, you know, BMW even says, yeah, check the wires. If you don't see any damage, just replace the valve. But when I read that between nine and six volts, I'm like, yeah, I really should just check and make sure it's getting the power it needs, uh, which I'm glad I did, because <laughs> that would have been a $200 mistake plus Plus, probably three or four hours, and you're supposed to put a valve cover on it, and there's a whole bunch of gaskets you need, and all this other stuff. Would have been a complete waste of my time. The damn thing needs a battery. <laughs> That's it. It needs a battery. So I went and picked one up this morning. It's uh, I, it's not a BMW one, but it's H8 is the size or the dimensions of it, right? It is an AMG. It is the same CCA and all that stuff. Uh, it has the hole for the vent tube. All oh, so it's basically the same thing. But the only thing with these, you have to register them to the car. So I'll uh, I'll finish this video just showing you guys, you know, how to tell the car. Wow, it's dark. <laughs> uh, just showing you guys how to, you know, register that new battery to the car. Uh, and basically what it's for is, um, you know, over time as the battery gets older and older, the charging system will try and like give it a little more uh, uh, amperage basically. Uh, but you don't want higher amperage coming into a brand new battery like that. So you basically register it as a new battery in, in the car. So, okay, we'll, we'll back off and we'll monitor it that way. So that's all it's for. Uh, is it necessary? Probably, 
probably not, but I, I, I'm still going to do it. I have the scan tool, we'll just do it. So that'll be the next part and then, yeah, that's it. Uh, all right guys, the battery's in. We need to register it, so that's the new one. Uh, pretty easy, the only thing I would say is uh, this positive, just cable tie it up out of the way, that's what I did. Makes your job uh, a lot easier. Uh, we need to register it. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, let's see, it is uh, maintenance test. Right, yeah, battery charging. I think it does some scan here too. Yeah, so it has to scan like what it can do. Stupid OTC. I wanna get one of them all tail ones like Igor has from Cars Exposed. I just don't work on enough cars anymore. Uh, let's see, we're doing a battery replacement. Battery exchange register. Oh, uh, let's try that one first. Let's see what's in there. Not sure what the difference is. Uh, yeah, that's what we want to register the exchange of a new battery of the same capacity and type which we did We got an AMG H8 same CCA everything uh, yeah. Oh, and that's a good to know look if you're exchanging it with a different capacity uh, You have to have a reprogram Oh Jesus <laughs> Make sure you get the same one <laughs> Hopefully this is coming through. Register battery exchange of same capacity and type. Yep. Yeah. Uh, registration necessary. Da da da. Failure registers. So yeah, I won't. We yeah, we know that. Go ahead. Just do it. Continue. There we go. <laughs> Key must be on. Engine not running, which it is. Go. Oh, God, yes, continue. A thousand questions. Okay. Yeah, so it's got 50,300 miles on it. Uh, and this is saying, yep, brand new mileage, make sure it's zero. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's see. Setting date and time field. Date and time of vehicle may need to be set manually. Yeah, that's fine. Continue. Completed successfully. Continue. That's it. Done. Uh, we'll do, we'll do one more test with the new battery. Uh, I, I mean, it's got 12.3 volts in it, um, so it should be okay. Let me see if I can, there we go. Let's go give it its first start. We'll set this to record the minimum value. Let's go. Yeah, that's a lot better. <laughs> so we didn't go under our nine voltage, our nine volts. So uh, you know, we shouldn't have a code. Uh, I'd have to, I mean, I assume we don't, but let's double check it. We may want a key cycle too. Yep, no codes, there you go. That's it. So yeah, kind of a, kind of a strange one, you know? The, the codes and everything, and it literally had nothing to do with the battery. This car started fine. You could leave it for two, three weeks, it'll start fine. Um, I just, something must be dying in that battery. Maybe like a dead cell or something, who knows. Uh, but, yep. So, read your code setting criteria <laughs> before you start throwing parts at your car. <laughs> All right guys, that's it. See you later.